Hey guys. Oh, my mic is. What the fuck is even. Oh my god. It... Okay, we're back. Hey guys, I'm Matt Lady. This video is going to be about uh, my build for farming Angler's Plat, which is a semi elusive, unique, corrupted meme fishing item. What a sentence, I know. Technically, it's not even part of the tab. So if you were to go in the tab and go to unowned, it wouldn't even be present, but it does have a slot allocated to it. So if you're being a stickler for collection, you don't really need it, but it's it's not that difficult to get. It just is a bit time consuming and the conditions are a bit wonky. So typically you don't get it by accident like other base game uniques. And we're gonna go over that in a second. So first let's just look at the ring and then we'll discuss how to get. It. Okay, so there's Angler's Plat. It is a ring that has no real use in the game. It's an item that has modifiers to fishing, which is a meme like Easter egg type thing in Path of Exile involving fishing rods. Uh, there are two unique fishing rods, one of which is hard to get, one of which is easy to get. This is a bit of an aside. I guess I could show you how to get those right now. Just because we're here, I may as well just show you. So um, there's was it Song of the Sirens. Oh my God, Siren. Ah, there it is, Song of Sirens. Okay, so Song of Sirens, the div card. Um, that gets you the Song of, well, the Vast is the div card. Song of Sirens is the fishing rod. There are two fishing rods in game. I believe they're labeled as staves. Does this work? Okay, maybe not staves. Oh, sorry, they're maces. They're technically maces. Song of Sirens, then Reefbane. Reefbane is a base game T0 drop. Song of Sirens is simply more common. Um, you'll see them in a similar setting, but Reefbane seems to be extremely more difficult to get for some reason. They both have their own prerequisites for dropping. I think it's just having on the Fairgrave's helmet. The Fairgrave's Tricornus enables fishing rod drops, which by the way, for some reason aren't affected by quantity. It's like a weird base chance to drop. We know this because there used to be a, a jewel that reduced quantity. They're just combustibles. Uh, this reduced your quantity. If you, we did things like studies with stacking up to 10 of these, you had no quantity and you'd get things like no items would drop, but then a fishing rod could still drop. So it kind of like, we, that's how we knew things. You know, you, it, there's certain things in the game existed outside, outside the boundaries of IQIR. But I digress. So Song of the Sirens common and can be acquired from the, the Divination card. Reefbane rare, um, much more rare. There are a couple other cards for fishing rods, but um, those won't get you uniques. This will just get you a white one. This will get you a rare one. But Song of the Sirens is not too bad to farm the vast card. The reason this is important for the collector, right, is because the Song of the Sirens and the Reefbane rods, if we take these out, they also don't have spots, right? It's still, there. there's no, if I go unowned, it's gonna just be the one thing I'm missing. But they have have a place, obviously. Fun fact you could do with these, though, for some reason, so you'll much much more likely get Song of the Sirens than Reefbane. There's only two outcomes if you use an Ancient Orb on them. They can only bounce between, um, oh, you know what? That's true, I forgot about this. Um, they can't roll out of this. I've given myself a chore, some would say. Either way, good demonstration for the video. So if you have a Song of the Sirens, it can become a Reef Bane, but not vice versa for some reason. I don't remember why that is, uh, but it clearly works like that. So um, I have to get another Song of the Sirens now, which is not that annoying because again, I think I'm maybe even hiding this on my fucking filter. It's possible. But uh, yeah, so we have the, this, this div card is the one you'd have to get to get more Song of the Sirens. There's a fishing rod. There you go. The vest is from Coral Runes, Coves, and Reef. And uh, it can be chanced, right? So I have this fishing rod that I just have to now chance into a Song of the Sirens, which is going to take an amount of time. Either way, that's a little fun uh, aside about the fishing rods, just for your own edification. Okay, but back to the English Plat. So, the English Plat ring can only be dropped under certain circumstances. If you want to know the details of the circumstances, not so much the details, but more about how it happened, um, on the wiki it uh, gives you a little hyperlink to the the meme post about it how to obtain the english plat the lady poor fishwife or man i guess whatever they them are uh, have a whole post about it and they're interesting in fishing stuff and items in game so there's a whole breakdown of that but it's been deduced effectively that the only prerequisites to drop it is it has to drop from a rare you have to be wearing a corrupted slither pinch uh, which is a pair of gloves that look like these this is a corrupted slither pinch the slither pinch that corrupt doesn't have to have a specific implicit or specific roles just has to be a corrupted slither pinch. So that's that. And then you have to have a means of fleeing, uh, i.e. chance to flee a black heart ring, or you could actually just do fire damage to most things. However, the easiest way 
Wearing a Dialios with a chance to flee. I think if you have a 21, 23, it's like 98 or 99%, but because of the quality increase from Dialios, I'm at 97% chance to flee. I have the same on my Mana Forged Arrows. It's kind of like the same principle if you're doing magic finding, any amount of things you can, you link to IR if you're doing that. So chance to flee on my stuff. And basically when I hit rares with my Lightning Arrow, there's a chance that when they die, they drop an English Plat just as like a random flat drop. Now, the English Plat is a unset ring that's corrupted, so if you just have this showing your filter, it'll it'll work. But then all there's really to it at, after that point is just picking a build that wants to do it, and then uh, picking content that has a decent amount of rares. So things that have a bunch of rares in content is Legion, uh, Breach, Harbinger, Abyss, but Abyss is a little annoying. So just picking any amalgamation of that and you're pretty much good to go. You can always add on Delirium for more rares. Um, in my circumstance, I'm picking Harbinger and uh, Delirium and then Expedition because I also kind of want to fit it into things I'm farming for myself for other reasons, so that's why I have uh, that. Now, when it comes to picking a build, you have a few options here. All you really have to do is look up builds that are using Slither Pinch, right? And then using uh, Chance to Flee Support. This is pretty much going to get you anybody who's trying to get an English plat, and through this, any means that, you know, this will give you an idea of what to look for. The traditional way, I would say the base method, is simply using a chance to flee setup and a slither pinch on a bow build, because it's just pretty comfy to just, like, do something like this. And you could do low-level content, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, magic finding, essentially. And then, uh, or you could do, you know, whatever other build you want, just it has to have Slither Pinch and it has to have a chance to flee link to it to really give you that, that chance to do it. So for me, what I decided to pick was a traditional Omni build that is using Lightning Arrow. So Lightning Arrow, Omni build. I picked a Fizz bow instead of an Ellie bow because I can convert out into multiple types and one of them is fire. So I do have that additional chance to flee for like humanoid and animal things. Um, and I'm just doing a low tier content with a bunch of Harbinger. You could use a Mage Blood because you're, if you want, or you could, I don't know why I'm to lab, or a Headhunter because you're killing so many rares. Headhunter's pretty good too. I just always prefer to use Mage Blood. That's why I picked that. But it's a basic Omni build. So I'm just a uh, Lightning Arrow on a Deadeye. I've just got them dead points still, but a uh, big massive thread set up and then all the standard normal bow stuff. An amount of suppression, uh, some avoidance, some stats, because I'm playing Omni. I have like 2100 Omni. It's a bit overkill, as in a bit, as in way overkill. Um, fun fact, I, I now know I have to do, was it Reef? Reef Cove or something else, so I'm going to probably pick one of those maps. Alright, so there's my map. I have just whatever Alcan go shit is fine. Um, I'm putting on again because I'm doing Harbinger, because it adds a bunch of rares. I just put on the Scarabs for additional Harbingers, and then they drop... A rare currency and they drop a single type and then I just have on the, the big one You could remove this for just more harbingers. That's really just preference and how many things you want to do Again, like it's the amount of effort you want to put forth I could add a hundred rares to one map or I could add 50 to two and I run that twice as fast It doesn't really matter too much for that sort of stuff or the whole idea is we're just you know killing rares with slur pinch and that's it um, Delirium you just put on a hundred percent chance to occur it uh, just gives you more rares. It's kind of a no-brainer there. So the tree is like 100% delirium blocking stuff, a bunch of map effect. Um, then I have an Expedition Harbinger. And then the last little nuggets are just these Val side zones, just in case I hit an adorned <laughs> side zone. I'm perpetually looking for that. But um, I did opt in for the big explosion, and I'm doing tri -Ellie, so I, I literally just put the big explosion in the middle and hit it. I don't want to think about it. I just like to have the option. And I'm doing that not because it's as the most... Oh, I, might, I might die here. Most effective thing to do. Um, it's more so I'm doing it because I'm also looking for the helmet from um, Expedition for myself. Right? So because I'm missing that, I want that on. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't put an Expedition. I'd put on, like, Legion. So, like, Legion and Harbinger are quite good, especially with Headhunter. Um, it's, I don't really know if it's, like, profitable doing this, per se. But just Harbinger is just a lot of currency, obviously, so to me it doesn't feel bad to do, and Harbinger Scarabs are quite common, so none of them are that rare. So I'll end up with a good chunk of currency. If you could do this on a higher tier map, never hurts to add altars. Uh, I really can't, because I'm kind of wearing weird gear, and I'm adding too many rares, so it's a little bit hard for me. But I could, uh, you know, make my gear a little bit more liberal, and I should be able to do it on a higher tier map, but it's this is basically my setup for this. A fun part of Harbinger, which is why I'm also doing this, is because I get a lot of Ancient Orbs from doing Harbinger, and a lot of Annulments. I want Annulments for 
uh, working on Adorn Jewels, and then Ancient Orbs, or tossing on Staves to try to get Burden of Shadows, which is very unlikely, but I'll still try, because I... That's all I have in me is to try, you know. Mad King card's pretty cool also. That's the one positive part, of, I guess, about doing a reef is that uh, the Mad King card is also here. So I will get a bunch of those in the process. See, it's a good thing I lost my Song of the Sirens, right? I'm very not worried about getting that back. I, uh, I've had multiple card sets of that in my life, so not a big deal. With this Harbinger setup, you do also have the potential to hit, like, a jackpot of Mirror Shards, but most times than not, you're going to get a, a pile of Transmutations, and that's that's cool, too. Reef does suck for, uh, you know, the boss situation. I don't even know if it's worth killing the boss. I really don't think it is. I'm going to leave. Yeah, I mean, that's basically it. I'm just going to be doing a bunch of maps um, with Harbinger and Expedition for myself, and then the Delirium to try to get the English Plat Ring. Um, at the same time, I guess I'll just I'll just do them on reefs, so I can also get some uh, Mad King cards. Uh, these are the ones for um, the Val Aspects for Adorned. Very cool. And then also, you know, the, uh, the Vast... For uh, the Song of the Sirens, because I I Ancient Orb mine. At the same time, I'll probably just casually in the side, just do, uh, I have like 20,000 Scarra chances, so I'll just, you know, just do this, and then probably eventually just get it that way, and then I can stop, stop doing Reef. But I probably still want to do Reef, because I want Mad King cards. Uh, anything to get adorned is like something that's on my radar, effectively. So, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, this is my strategy for getting Angler's Plat. Uh, picked build, utilizing the chance to flee and the Slither Pinch, which are prerequisites. You could pick any build that uses those two things, but for me, I think a bow build made the most sense just because of how they operate. So, and uh, hitting frequently to make sure that flee is still on, etc. And uh, I'm going to farm a bunch of Harbingers and I'll get a bunch of Ancient Orbs because I want to use Ancient Orbs on Staves to try to get the only base game unique I'm missing. Uh, for me, at least, with this, which is going to be the Burden of Truth. Burden, sorry, Burden of Shadows. Not Burden of Truth. I don't know what the fuck Burden of Truth is. And then, um, you know, it's, it's going to be incredibly rare. It's like hitting a Mage Blood or Headhunter. Um, something like that. So, for that, uh, you know, I'm just going to use Agnorods, probably. Because I have so many of those. So, I'll just be taking the Agnorods and then handing them in. And then getting Agnorods and trying to gain Burden. But won't be getting Burden because it's going to be unconscionably rare. But, uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe eventually. Um, that's it. That's my English Plat uh, video with a little fishing rod uh, lesson. And I guess also a cautionary tale that doesn't uh, ancient out. Although I really don't think this is going to be that difficult to resolve. And more importantly, it's going to get resolved as a byproduct of me trying to get this little, little ring. Little, little dinky English Plat ring. So hopefully I'll have that within the next week or so. And, uh, yeah, you'll see me doing some... Uh, some some lightning arrowing on stream. Uh, I'm Matt Lighty, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Good luck hunting your fishing items and your angler plats, etc. Bye-bye.